Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful flower which is a Japanese tree peony. I actually saw the image online of the real flower and fell completely in love with it. Found it very striking and impressive but before we start please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss any of my video uploads. So now if you're ready let's begin. So to make this beautiful flower first and foremost you'll need your gum paste. Um, I've got mine in a light, an extremely light pink. It literally just has a tint of pink in there. Um, so you can't really tell, but it's literally just a tiny amount of pink. Um, and I've just added that in and made it all pliable to work with. I've added my treks in there and everything. So we're all ready to go. Your foam pad. Your storage board, as you can already see, I've started to cut some petals out. Your veining board. A fan paintbrush and a sort of a fluffy one as well, a flat fluffy one. A palette, you'll need a palette for this. Excuse the mess, I was I was busy um, working and doing some of the petals before I started filming. You'll also need some 26 gauge wires and five of the 24 or six of the 24 gauge wire. Some yellow long head double sided stamens. You can either use pieces of paper or you can use parchment, whatever you prefer, but you'll definitely need something as you, if you've not guessed it already, you will be painting and you're going to be using these colors for the, the painting and the, and the dusting. So we've got primrose yellow, spring green, foliage green, um, pillar box red, some velvet red, and we've also got some rejuvenator. To colour in the petals, um, you can use the rejuvenator and you can either mix it with gel paste colour or you can use the dust colour. You can use whichever colours you prefer, whether you prefer the gel paste, liquid based or uh, powder based. Sugar glue, corn flour, pliers, a ball tool and a dresden tool. Now for this, you could use either or both. Rolling pin. You may or may not need a cocktail steak. Um, your veiners. So these are some beautiful veiners. The indentation is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it comes out really nice and really textured. Um, and it's just like a wow veiner. And these beautifully designed, uh, differently designed uh, petal cutters. Firstly, we're just going to get some gum paste. And you only need the smallest amount. Roll it into a ball and then just gently into a hairdrop shape. And then we're just going to get our sugar glue and our 24 gauge wire, dip it in, scrape it on the side just to get the excess off, and then right into the bottom of the bud. And then we're just going to pinch it gently at the base to secure it. And then give it a bit of a twist to secure it further. And then just pull it off and there's your bud. And then just get your Dresden tool or if you've got a small knife like this, use it to create three indentations from the base right to the top give it a bit of a pinch to pop it back into shape and then just bend it ever so slightly so it looks like that and over here i've already got six ready so you can use five or six or three however many you prefer but because i'm changing the style a little bit i've decided to go with six so the ones that I've the one I've done, I'm just gonna pop it to the side to let it dry further. And the ones that I've already got done, I'm gonna go ahead and start dusting them. For the dusting, I'm using again spring green, foliage green, pillar box red, and primrose yellow, all by Sugar Flare. And they are all tints. So I'm just gonna put small amounts onto my paper here. So, 
now that we've got this i'm going to go ahead and quickly do the base yellow going up to about half and just try and blend that in really nicely so when you add the other colors there's no harsh lines so once you've done the yellow, go in with a bit of a darker colour at the base. So we're going in with the foliage green. And again, just going to cover the base slightly. But for the green, you want to add small amounts rather than packing that colour all in one go. Build it up slowly as you go along. And then the next one, then we're going to go in with the spring green, just on top of that. And you don't have to add too much of that. It's just to give them a variation of colours. So you can see all three coming through. Then we're going to go in with the pillar box red for the tips at the very top. And that's how they look once they're dusted. Now let's go ahead and put them together, for which you'll need some floral tape and some scissors if you wanna just um, cut it in half like I have done, so you get two strips out of the one. And I'm just using a dark green floral tape so you want to stretch it to release the glue and then you also want to grab your stamens with the stamens you want to fold them in half and just spread them out a little bit so because the stamens are difficult to handle they come pre sort of like put together for you um, and I'm not going to go ahead and open them at all because then they just get very very fiddly I'm going to fold them in half and just spread them out a little bit and then once we put them together we'd be able to sort of like move them around even more once once they've been wired together so just like that and then we're just going to get our buds and slowly just bend them slightly not too much but just a little bit with the pointy centers um facing out I prefer to have them facing out, you can have them facing out or you can have them up in different directions, whatever you prefer. So one in the middle and then everything else following from the outside. And just position them where you want to position them. And then just tie your floral tape right near the base, as tight as you possibly can. And give it a few wraps oops that happens quite often actually <laughs> so yeah as tight as you can just be careful not to keep ripping it get your one set of stamens put them around one side and then tie them together as well as tight as you can so they can't move and it's very tight and secure. So that's one in and then you can do the same for the other one and then you can just move them about using your fingers or your tweezers. So now that that's done I have this which I'm just gonna poke it in there and just let it sit there. And now we can get on with the petals. For the petals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to section these off because this is one full set of 12 cutters. I'm going to section them off in different sizes. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to cut out either four or five petals of each cutter. So if you're going to do five, you're going to have total, you're going to have a total of 60 petals. If you're going to do four, you're going to have a total of 48 petals. So you want to do four, 
444 or 5555 and so on because this is going to be quite a big flower you want this this much petals to make it look massive and gorgeous and be eye-catching now on to how we're going to cut the petals out so as i mentioned at the beginning you'll need your veining board and with the veining board we're just going to get some paste roll it into a ball and then into a sausage and then pop it into the grooves of the veining board press down firmly to cover them all and then with your rolling pin you want to start rolling upwards you want to roll a little bit down but not too much because for these type of flowers, for wire flowers, uh, basically you want the bottom part to stay a little more thick and you want the top part to be the thinnest. And when you feel you've got to that stage, then because I have added a lot of treks into this to keep it as pliable and as soft as I can, I'm just going to add some corn flour to it. When you start cutting it out, using the side down that's that you're going to cut with, just pop it onto the groove and just give it a bit of a wiggle and it comes out nice and clean, like perfectly clean. And that's what you want. You want perfectly clean, crisp edges. So go ahead, cut out all of your petals using this method so do all 60 or 48 or however many petals you want to use once you've cut out all your petals you'll need your foam pad your paper or your parchment whatever you're using your rejuvenator your palette and whatever color you want to use i've just gone ahead and used the the petal dust because i've already got some color already here because i had already done some petals before um, off camera I'm just going to add a little bit more of the rejuvenator into this middle section here where my color is now you don't want to add too much at the first amount because as you know it does evaporate and dry up very quickly and what I'm going to do is with you also need the petal burner so with the 26 gauge wires I'm just going to pop it into my sugar glue And pop it in the bottom base of the paste and take it right up to about half and then I'm just going to give it a quick pinch at the base just to secure it further and then for this method you can either pop it into your vein first and then color or you can do it the other way around whichever you prefer now because these indentations and the and the veining te uh, texture is a little more detailed and intricate you don't want to press too hard because that will just tear up your petals although it's good but it makes it look more natural you don't want to press too firmly so just like gentle right presses especially with this veiner other veiners you might need to press a little bit more firmly with but with this one not as much even then it does tear a little bit but the texture and the veining is absolutely gorgeous and I love how it turns out once it's done. Um, so once you've done that, you want to get your fan brush or whatever brush you want to you want to be using and just dip it in. Get a good coating on your brush and you can add as little or as lot of colour as you want. Um, and I just tend to do that a few times and do it on the other side as well and wait for it to dry because you don't want to start getting it once it is still wet so just wait for it to dry for a minute or two now as you frill it does make your foam pad a little bit dirty stick to using the one side on your foam pad so that's your foam pad now you can either use your dresden tool for this or your ball tool as i mentioned in the beginning and just do different techniques and a variation of frilling the petals you 
when you put them together, it'll look really, really natural. I forgot to mention, you'll also need an apple tray and then you can just pop them into your apple tray to let them dry overnight. I've done a few to show you the different types of paint technique that I used. Um, I've done some like this, like I've just done now. I've coated a few in lines to get them a bit more dark, which I'll show you how to do now. Grab yourself another petal, another wire. Now what I'll do is I will colour it before popping it into the vein and just to show you how it looks doing it this way. So again, a few drops of the rejuvenator. Give it a little swirl. So and then just coat the one side just like that. And you can add as little or as more as you want. And then for the other side, I'm going to use sort of a flat brush to do the other side. And they don't all have to be as dark. You can do light versions, you can do dark versions, you can do a variation. And when you put the flower together, it will look so gorgeous, you'll fall in love with it. Right, now time for the veining. And you also, you don't have to worry about the veining, the, the little vein bit going at the bottom. You can use whichever side you prefer uh, because you can't tell once it's been veined. And this time I'm going to pop it in the top section um, and the middle so it gives a little bit of a wave to the petal. So again, I'm just going to press down gently. And that's how it's come out. So already it's given the petals some movement onto the foam pad. Your Dresden tool and this time I'm just going to work my way on the edge of the flower. Do half of the petal on this side and then I'm going to turn it over and pop it on the edge a little bit from that side and make this a little bit long. And then just bring that bit in from this side. And you can curl these petals as much as you want. You can leave them flat a little bit. It's whatever you prefer. But the more movement the petals have, the more realistic look it will have. And then you can just pop it into your apple tray to dry further. When you start getting towards the final few layers, you want to pull your hand back a little bit and avoid using heavy colour. So you want it like in little bits and bats, um, just to show that you're in the final uh, few layers towards the end of the flower. Space the colour out quite a lot and used less, as opposed to here, where it's quite dark and detailed. Um, but just look at how gorgeous these petals look. So you do all of your petals exactly like we've done with these. Um, do as many as you want and leave them to dry overnight or as always to speed up the drying process just pop them into the oven on the lowest temperature for around five minutes um, and then just leave them out and let them cool before you start assembling they will dry as they cool because they're wired you want them to be fully fully dry before assembling and then putting them together so once you've done all your petals now it's time to assemble the flower with some floral tape and again I've just cut it in half um, and got two um, long pieces and just laid out all my petals just look how beautiful they look uh, whilst all just being sat there nicely and um, I can't wait to show you what the end result will be so let's begin assembling the flower so first I've done it in order of the smallest to the biggest and I'm just gonna keep going and we're gonna get as many layers as we possibly can uh, 
finishing all the petals. Now I've done 60 here. And as I mentioned earlier, you could use however many you want. You can use either less or more. That's completely up to you. But I want it like a wow. Um, and I want it really eye-catching. So when someone looks at the flower, they say, oh my God, that's so beautiful. It's unbelievable. And it just makes it look more nice as well. So first things first is just pick up your petal and align it with the base of the buds and the center. And then just stretch the glue, stretch the tape to release the glue as normal. And then just start joining it together. Just like that. And you want to do it like at least twice just to make sure it is completely secure. Don't pull the tape too much so it tears because that becomes really annoying. So once we've done one, got it from the smallest, we're going to then move on to the next one. That's the next cutter. And again, I'm just going to bend the wire and just place it next to the first one. And as I go along, I'm going to keep getting one petal from the four. So from the four sets that I've done here, that's what I'm going to do. So use the, the first four, then the medium four, then the large four. And then moving on to this one. So again, keep going. And then just to add the final few. You want to get it wrapped as tightly as you can. Just look how gorgeous that's looking. It's absolutely huge. And then just take a look at it from the top and see where you could add your final one. And then just pop it in. And I'm going to slowly start bringing the tape down. So all the wires get covered. There we go. So that's covered all the wires and has made it very nice and neat. And then just start opening the petals up more. And there we go. That is the finished flower. It is absolutely huge. And one is perfectly enough to be the center of attention um, on a single kick. But just look at that. It's absolutely massive. It's one of those flowers that's very pleasing to the eye. Um, the way you can just sit there and just keep looking at it and just admiring it because of its beauty. And the different movement and the techniques we've used uh, on each different petal um, really brings it to, to life. But yeah, that's the finished flower. And I hope you guys love this and will let me know in the comments um, what you think of this. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed and really liked this gorgeous flower of mine and the new technique that I did. And once again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give the videos a thumbs up if you like the content and you like the videos. Uh, comment below and tell me where you're watching me from. I will catch you next time with a brand new one. Bye.